If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with a deck tech for my favorite fan format, Tiny Leaders. This one uses Animar, Soul of Elements, Protection from White and Black, and it gets a plus one plus one counter whenever you cast a creature spell, but the reason to me that it doesn't feel like a tiny leader's commander is its next line. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each plus one plus one counter on Animar. Now, if you've ever seen Animar go off in EDH, for instance, in one of my videos, I have five, I think, now, then the reason that that works, as you've seen, is that you're doing things like free casting Eldrazi, or Platinum Angel, or Blightsteel Colossus, or making the X on cards like Hangerback Walker, or Hydras, a Graham's number infinitely huge. <laughs> uh, you can't really do that so much, with the exception of the Hydra one, Hangerback Walker, in Tiny Leaders, but I did just give away the game plan, that's what we're going to be doing here. There are other ways to build Animar, for the example, there's an Affinity Brew that's really sweet. You can do Tribal with things like Slivers, but I'm going for a Hydra combo, if you will. If you will. Hail Hydra, shoutouts to Captain America. I'm going to divide my cards into five categories, and by the way, I actually won't be putting up the pictures for each of these, there are just too many of them, but there's a deck list in the description below, so go and check that out. First, for ramp creatures, we have Birds of Paradise, very simply. One mana flies if we need it as a blocker, but just generates one mana of any color I choose. Gives me the turn to Animar. Wild Cantor, same thing. Except I have to sacrifice it and doesn't fly, but that's fine. Now, Diligent Farmland, Farm Hand is a one drop, but it essentially feels like a two drop, right? Because you have to pay one in green to sacrifice it, get a basic land in tapped. We don't care about the muscle, bur <laughs> muscle burst part of its effect. This just gives us the turn 3 Animar if we only had two lands in our opener. Bloom Tender is the best mana ramp creature in the deck, because yes, it gives us the turn 3 Animar, but also it generates three mana when you tap it if Animar is out. So when we're comboing off, this is insane. Generate green, blue, red whenever you go. Beast Caller Savant. With Animar having at least one counter, this is pay one mana, make one mana, because it has haste. Now the one mana can only be used on creature spells, but that's usually fine. Most of the cards in this deck, most of the non-lands, are creatures. And when we're comboing off, that's what we need the most anyway. Rattleclaw Mystic. Now, ideally, you're playing it face down and then morphing it so that you net mana off of this and then tap it as well. That's where you want to be, but otherwise it just gives you the turn 3 Animar. Sylvan Carry added because Hexproof. Turn 3 Animar, and especially, say, the Geist decks or the Tesa decks, no Source of Power Shares, no Path to Exile, no Oust, they won't work on Sylvan Carry added, and they can't use this on a Mana Dork to stall the Animar. And so we're getting that Animar out, whether you like it or not. In the case of Geist, you better find that Vapor Snag, or a Counterspell. Often they have the Counterspell, but you know. Next we have Soccer Tribe Elder. Sacrifice it to get that basic land. Easy enough. Wall of Roots. Generates green mana by putting a minus O oh, minus one counter, oddly enough. There are ways to make infinite mana in the deck, I'll show you in a second, using Wall of Roots. And this isn't really a ramp creature in the same way that the others are, but it does ramp you, so I'm including it in here. The reason I say it's not quite the same is because by the time you could cast Wood Elves, you could also cast Animar usually. But we do some infinite loops with it. Well, infinite loops, you'll see. Now for card draw, we have, starting off with Elvish Visionary, very simply, draw a card, 1-1. One, one. Wall of Blossoms, Defender, 0-4, draw a card, same bit. Alchemist Apprentice is a color-shifted Elvish Visionary that makes you sacrifice it to draw a card. Poor guy, nice beard though. Council of Advisors, blue, and one extra mana, but not in this deck, thanks to Animar. Otherwise, it's Elvish Visionary. Merchant of Scrolls is Council of Advisors. Again. Fathom Seer. Yay for Morph. Okay, so what we want to do here is turn it face down for free with Animar, and then morph it by returning two islands, and at that point it basically becomes Gush. It's just Gush. You didn't have to pay any mana, 
You draw two cards by bouncing two islands. It's a creature version, though. Now, this is pretty sweet on the turn that we're comboing off. Until then, not so much, but on the turn we're comboing off, this is basically just you play it and draw two cards. You can take the islands that you're returning to hand and float the mana first. In that case, it's not even really a loss of mana. And if you need to ramp, ramp, if you need the one extra mana, just play one of the islands you just returned, if you haven't played a land yet, uh, to, to the field. Although usually you're looking for another land, particularly the one that I'm going to show you at the end of this deck tag. It's actually the last one. Next we have Foul Emissary. Nice little 1-1 one -one that lets you look at the top four cards, put a creature into your hand. We don't care about the Emerge text because no Emerge. Raven Familiar anticipates when it enters the battlefield. Imperial Recruiter, best tutor in the deck, right? It goes and gets a creature with power two or less from your deck, adds it to hand. A lot of our enablers, even some win cons, come out there. Augury Owl doesn't draw a card, but it has Scry 3, so I think it merits inclusion anyway. Scry 3 is just so deep for one mana. I think that that's fine. Shardless Agent, two mana, even with Animar out. But it cascades, so nice little two for one. Easy enough. Phantasmal Image, because if you need another of these, or anything, then go for it. Glimpse of Nature, top tier card draw that is legal in Tiny Leaders. Whenever you play a creature this turn, draw a card. Seems good. Next for our enablers, we have Cloud of Fairies, the most important creature in the deck. But all we care about here is that it comes into play and untaps two lands. That gets to be silly very quickly. Next we have Fauna Shaman, this is our survival of the fittest. Pay green and tap it, discard a creature, add a creature from your deck to your hand. So go and get Cloud of Fairies, or whatever you need in the moment. Grinning Ignis gives us a way to generate counters on Animar on its own. Now every time you do this loop with it, you actually lose red mana, because you cast it, let's say just for red, you spend red on its ability, and you gain red and colorless. And then you return it to hand. So every time you do that, you lose red. So it won't go infinite, but it does give you the ability to make Animar huge quickly. The most important card in the deck, however, almost more important than Animar, but the most in the actual deck itself, Cloudstone Curio. Oh yeah, so whenever a non-artifact permanent comes into play under your control, you may return another permanent you control that shares a permanent type with it to its owner's hand. In other words, when you play a creature, bounce another creature to your hand. Okay, so here's where it gets silly. Cloud of Fairies, you're awesome like this. With Cloudstone Curio out, Play the Cloud of Fairies, untap two lands, and by the way, Cloud of Fairies should be costing one, and then play, say, Wood Elves to get all the forest out of your deck, Wall of Roots to generate infinite green mana, any of your cantrip creatures to draw you a card, Imperial Recruiter to go and get all the creatures added to your hand, uh, Foul Emissary, same, let's see, um, I guess you can anticipate with Raven Familiar, it gets so silly so quickly. We just There are ways to generate infinite mana as well, uh, with not just Wall of Roots to gen generate infinite green, but your morph creatures, because you're morphing them, you're playing them face down for free. So every time you do this loop, you pay one for Cloud of Fairies, bounce the morph to hand, uh, play it face down, bounce the Cloud of Fairies, and then you're generating one mana every time, infinite mana. This is so silly. Like Cloudstone Curio, if it weren't for the fact that this is a singleton format and there aren't really any ways to tutor up Cloudstone Curio, Trinket Mage won't get it for instance, this card would probably have to be banned because it just does so many silly things. Oh my goodness, it's so good. Um, there are some potential replacements for Cloud of Fairies. Deceiver Exarch and Pester might can work You pay with a morph creature. So you, or another Deceiver Exarch or Pestermite, whichever is the other. You play it and then untap the land that was used to cast it, and then bounce the other one. And that won't generate you infinite mana, but that will give you infinite storm. You can do that. Um, it's so silly. It's so silly. Now, because we have all these ramp creatures, we are also running Concordant Crossroads. For, well, actually for two reasons. One, the ramp creatures will now tap for mana on that turn. Secondly, it lets us go for lethal immediately with some of our win conditions, like Animar, but also 
Hangerback Walker, for instance, once we have infinite mana, or even just a lot of mana, this is stupidly good, it gets you around, uh, let's see, Toxic Deluge. It gets you around basically every Wrath spell in the format, except Anger of the Gods, and even then, once it's big enough, Anger won't work. I'm sorry, this is, this is pretty good. This is, they better have Path, or Oust, or Swords, or Anger when it's small, or something like that, because otherwise, if they kill it, you just get all those 1-1 one, one colorless thopter tokens, and that's lethal anyway. Genesis Hydra, <laughs> when you have, technically speaking, a crap ton of mana, this just goes insane. So even if you aren't infinite, you can Genesis Hydra for a bunch, get the Cloudstone Curio, and then you can go infinite. Um, and you can also bounce Genesis Hydra, by the way, uh, return it, and just keep doing that over and over again to play all of the non-lands in your deck. Oh my goodness, it's silly good. Uh, related to Hangerback Walker, we have Hooded Hydra. Not quite as good when it dies, right? But when it, so partially, be, be, it, green green in the cost, it can't be cost, it cast for free. And also the one ones don't have flying. But even so, this gives us another morph, which I think puts us up to three morphs in the deck. There's Fathom Seer, there's Hooded Hydra, there's Rattleclaw Mystic. Yeah, three. There we go. Primordial Hydra. Big ol' Trampler. <laughs> this thing can win the, on its own. It doesn't need the combo. It doesn't need your combo. They keep killing Animar. Primordial Hydra. And lastly, this one isn't necessarily a win condition on its own. It's Thassa, God of the Sea. It's a 5-5. You're probably not getting to Devo 5 in this deck. What we care about gives us more consistency with Scry 1 on our upkeep, but also it can make target creature unblockable like Animar. Sometimes you'll get in a scenario where Animar is huge, but you can't actually close the game out because they can chump block. And so Thassa gets us out of that. You could play something like Kessig Wolf Run, but colorless mana gets really bad really quickly in this deck, and so I don't want to have a colorless land unless I have to. So there you go. That's why I don't run Kessig. There are a few other options, but I think that Thassa is where we want to be because she also improves the consistency of the deck a bit. Now, as for the lands, we start off with uh, some packets. For each of these, we have Fetch, Dual, Shock. So for Simic, Fetch, Dual, Shock. We also do the same thing for Gruul, Fetch, Dual, Shock. And then for Is It, we only have Fetch, Dual. And the reason is because we need green mana a lot more than we need... Uh, Actually, red or blue, but especially red. Red, not so much at all. And this doesn't, doesn't generate green at all. So only one. We don't want to be stuck with a hand where we can't cast a ramp creature out the top. We do have a Hinterland Harbor. You know, easy enough, right? Since we're, we have all these forests and all these islands. Speaking of forests and islands, we have uh, two basic forests and an island. This island in particular, because I am a 13-year-old boy. Yep, I am. Uh, Ancient Ziggurat is kind of our command tower. Taps for uh, any color mana, but only for creatures. So basically the whole deck, basically. And speaking of command tower, actual command tower. <laughs> Ta-da! Because it's a multicolored commander deck. Tiny these, why not? Uh, Frontier Buvok. I actually don't know how to pronounce that word, so I apologize. Same thing, but it has to come in tapped, unfortunately. Often we don't have the turn one play enough, the turn one mana dork. Uh, I think that's fine to have in. I'm not crazy about it though. And Gaia's Cradle. So if you can untap this with Cloud of Fairies, yeah, you have infinite mana super easily. Something that taps for blue for Cloud of Fairies, and then Gaia's Cradle is the other one you untap. Infinite green mana, with Cloudstone Curio anyway. Actually, even if you don't have Cloudstone Curio, this just generates, technically speaking, a crap ton of mana. And so that's the deck right now. I hope you've enjoyed it. This is for Tiny Leaders. I'll be bringing an EDH Animar deck tech to you before too long. Again, the deck list is in the description below. If you have any suggestions, by all means, but there are so many different ways to build Animar decks. Um, that it would be pretty sweet to see what you have to say what your take on it is, especially if it's similar to mine but has some tweaks. Alright, I will see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.